Hold tight. Hold on! Fishermen are a breed apart. It is very much a Marmite job. Oh, hail the hate! I do question my sanity sometimes. Every trip is a gamble. You just have to go with your gut instinct and your experience. Come up! Get it right, and the crew can come home with thousands. <laughs> Get it wrong, and they can catch nothing. My worst has been £2.50. I just want to be there to support him. As they battle against the odds, and the elements. Things can turn quite nasty very quickly. It's the most dangerous job in Britain, is so it? Worst injury I've seen. Death. Now there's a demand for a new generation who are tough enough to endure the call to sea. I don't know anything about fish. They swim. No, we can definitely break people and definitely make people, yeah. I've never ever succeeded at anything, you know? I ain't backing down on it. You learn who you are quite quickly in this sort of job. As fishermen, you are the last of the hunters. It's early spring. Yeah, we'll get this last bit of gear aboard, boys, and we go. Skippers across the south coast are getting ship shape for another week's fishing. Are we ready to go, boys? Matt is captain of the Armoranda, one of Devon's top earning boats. Another week, another dollar. My first trip, 25 years old, and we came in at a 40 plus thousand trip. I had all the other fishermen in Brixham say, yeah, beginner's luck, beginner's luck, but it was just the start of it. Let's go fishing. Every year, Matt catches over a million pounds worth of fish. Ah, oh, yeah! Beauty! Most of Matt's crew have been with him for years. Come on, disco! Time is money! Over the next seven days, they are hoping to catch over 40,000 pounds worth of cuttlefish, Dover sole, and monkfish. There she comes. The profits will be shared between them. It obviously helps having the crew behind me all the time. We haven't let them down to date, so it must be nice for them knowing that they got the best chance on this boat as any other boat, or more chance of earning a good wage week in, week out. But on this trip, one thing is different. I try out the way, mate. Matt is breaking in a new crew member. I haven't lost a finger yet on anyone. <laughs> Travis has been out of work and on job seekers allowance for the past two years. We'll baffle you for a couple days, mate. There's a lot to learn, but just go with the flow and you'll be right. You've got that one shot. You can't mess up. If I do something wrong that's really bad, you might not get the catch. I'll let everyone down. That will just end up annoying the skipper. So I don't want to let no one down. Push the bum hole forward. It's not that's it. The faster you learn, the more money you earn. You can guarantee when I go out down the pubs downtown, I'll have at least three or four people ask me for a job. Down here, you're losing that much on every tail, you're gonna lose a lot of money. It's not easy to get on this boat, you've got to really impress. Now we know who Jack the Ripper might have been. <laughs> yeah, we the trophy a couple times for the highest earning boat at the port. Yo, Trav! Do the biz. Touch wood very rarely of a poor trip. We're at the top. 
Oh, no. But not all boats are doing so well. There's two here that are absolutely shattered the eight for three. With 40 years of fishing under her belt, the Van Dijk is one of the oldest boats in harbour. Hello, Chris. You all right? Her skipper, Drew, hasn't earned a penny in weeks because he's been stuck in port making repairs. Well, the latest is we're just about geared up, ready to go to sea, and as soon as we get a trip in, I'll send you some money, mate. The, uh, the good news is the MCA have given us a new MOT on the boat, which was kind of a very, very big box we had to tick. I'll get you some money in uh, about two weeks' time. I probably won't be able to get all of it, but we'll, we'll be able to give you a couple of grand. It's uh, down to me as a skipper to go and make the boat pay, and there's always repairs to do. Yeah, OK, mate. Ideally, we should put some new wires on, but we don't have the money to do that at the moment, so we need to fish to get some money to get some new wires. It's kind of a catch-22 situation, unfortunately. Did you hear that? As soon as we get a trip and I'll send you some money. OK. OK, thanks, Chris. Cheers. Bye. Bye. <laughs> See why I left last time. Are you proud to be part of the Van Dyke? <laughs> <laughs> it's shape. Am I allowed to say shape? No. Hey, can we start again? <laughs> Once upon a time, that boat was the best earning boat. So the nuts and bolts, did you want to change them? No, if they're still okay. We're not doing too great at the minute, but Drew is the best. Best skipper that I know. If we work all night, I'm not coming. Mm. So if we work all night, I ain't coming tonight. I'm gonna tell him now. Fucking had enough. Crewmates Pillar and Harry have been working unpaid all week to repair the boat's scalloping gear. Yeah. But it's still not ready. Quite as bad, a little bit more. Fucking joke. Normally, most boats you don't really you, you keep on top of the problem, so you don't really get the problems. You're always getting stuff fixed and stuff. I I think personally, Drew waits for things to break, then he'll fix it. With debts rising every day, Drew is insisting they leave as soon as possible. But his crew are not convinced. You up for having a chat with him? Saying fuck off. I mean, we are good crew members to you, and we do work hard on this. We've done this for four days now, unpaid. Yeah. Yeah. I know your circumstances. But we want to get to sea, and we want to make some money. We don't want this gear coming in and repairing it every five minutes. I can assure you the financial pressure is on me. I know it is, but... I owe fucking we're... shitloads of money everywhere. I'm maxed out on all my credit cards because I've not been taking wages. I, I, we, I need we, to we get to sea and you. I need to earn I money. We completely know your position. But... Yes, we're fucking about fixing stuff at the last minute, but the financial pressure is mine. It just seems like a rush job to us, mate. Right, I hear you, but it's not a democracy, and I want to go to sea. Hi, Aaron. Hello, mate, yeah. All right, mate, nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah, good. Okie dokie. Um, <clears throat> Right, well, do you want to jump aboard and yeah, yeah. have a little look round? Aaron is joining the crew of the Van Dyke. Don't worry about them. Having spotted an ad for a trainee deckhand. Jump if you fancy. Right, come through here. It is very random. I did three years of um, acting, singing and dancing. Through it. This will be his first trip to sea. If you go down the engine room, don't put your hands near any spinning, nasty-looking things on it. I'm going to go on this boat with people I don't know and things I'm not used to. I'm not going to say I'm not nervous, just to seem cool or anything. I'm, I'm totally nervous. I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> so, right, anyway, I had better toddle off because it's bedtime. Can I have a kiss, then? Because I'm going to sea. No! Give me a kiss. Despite his crew's misgivings, after five weeks stuck on shore not earning, Skipper Drew is determined to leave within the next few hours. 
I'll settle, with, I'll settle for a Razzie. <laughs> At the moment, unfortunately, it's a case of needs must. I owe people money. The only way I'm going to pay that is by getting the boat to sea. Is she not She's hiding. Just a kiss. Mwah. I'm sorry I won't be here for your birthday. It's all right. I'll be thinking of you. Twelve years old. You take some pictures. You promised me you'd stay small and cute forever. I remember as a teenager thinking I would never be a fisherman's wife. It's, um, I saw it, I used to see it as being really, really hard, yeah, emotionally to cope with. When right, I and at the moment as well, it, it feels kind of harder, if anything, as well, because the pressures and the stresses financially, emotionally, mentally. OK. I love you too. I need him, but I can't have him. He's got to go to sea. Shut that one off for us, Mikey. As dawn breaks, the Van Dyke is at last on its way. Loads and uh, I'll speak to you when I can. Have a nice week. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Daddy gonna go fishing, so Daddy see you when he gets back, yeah? I love you. You be good for Mummy. Bye. Love you. Love you. Love you. When you go to sea, you're, you're responsible for the guys' lives and their livelihoods. You want to make sure they earn as much money as they can so they've got enough money to feed their family and keep a roof over their head. It smells fucking good, doesn't it? Oh, mm -mm. Let the fun begin. Drew is heading 35 miles off Devon's coast to one of his favourite scallop hotspots. Give him a good wave. The Van Dyke will be gone for seven days. Bye-bye, Daddy. Bye-bye, Daddy. Bye. It is a very fine line at the moment. I have to get the boat to sea to earn money, to pay the bills. I just hope to God we catch something. After five weeks stuck on land for repairs, the Van Dyke is once again on the hunt for scallops. Right, all the hooks out. Albeit with fishing equipment, some of the crew are still worried about. It's no secret about his financial troubles and everything else. He's just been trying to keep earning and keep trying to make it work. But unfortunately, it's due to the lack of maintenance and money that's been put into her. She has been struggling it a couple of times. With a bag of scallops selling for up to 70 pounds, Drew is hoping that a big catch will help with his debts. Shake some fucking rust off it. The thought that we'll go out there and, yep, yeah, this week, this is going to be it this week. We're going to uh, hit it big and keep a few people we owe money to off our backs. That's what you hope for. The Van Dyke's scallop gear is pulled across the seabed for up to 90 minutes at a time. If he can find the scallops, Drew will need at least 20 good hauls before he's covered his costs and gone into profit. That's it, lovely jubbly. For the Van Dyke's newest recruit, it's a first taste of life as a deep sea fisherman. Go out to sea and there is no signal, you can't get hold of anyone. You can't dial 999, we're in the middle of the ocean, come get us. If you fall in the sea and the, the boat sinks, you have to survive. So that's what makes it more scary. <laughs> Can you put another mark on the starboard side here, please? Aaron has only two days to shadow the crew before he'll be expected to work proper shifts. Make sure the decks are ship shape. All the 
we're tying the nets up here, we're not earning a penny. Get it in and out as quick as we can. On the Armoranda, the crew are bringing in their fifth haul of the day. That's it, mate. Massive shake. Don't be scared of it. And Skipper Matt is keeping a close eye on the latest addition to his well-oiled team. That's the one, mate. Pick all them out. They're the dollar signs. Where I come from, older generation, they think the younger generation are all idiots. A lot of my mates are either in jail, in the army, or all they want to do is sit on the backside and play on the Xbox all day. You know, I'm not interested in that. I want to achieve something in my life, and that's a goal. You all right? Feeling all right? I'm feeling good. Yeah? Belly going a bit? No, no. I'm good now. Good man. Keep, try and keep my balance, that's all. I know for a fact I ain't going to like it at first. I'm not going to like it from minute one, but I'll get used to it. You've got to do things in life that you don't like, so... The Armoranda is one of Devon's top-earning boats. But so far... No! Fishing has been disappointing. Where the fuck's all the fish gone? Where's all the fish gone? It's got to be the tide. Nah, it's not that good. It's not good enough to go back on. 80 hauls a trip. If I had one bad haul, I'm pissed off. <laughs> I'm flipping out. It's only two hours wasted. It's not wasted, it's still earn money, but all the time I just want to be the top, be the best, earn the most. On Matt's boat, average catchers won't do. So he's gambling everyone's wages and moving to a new fishing ground five hours away. Yo! All right. All right. Right, plan of attack. We've got a five hour steam to the Earth's deeps. No, not earning money while we're steaming, burning fuel. But if it pays off, it'll pay off big time. It's the old faithful rich John, you know, Channel Islands. Yeah. You'll target the most expensive fish, monkfish, Dover sole, brill and turbot, which are all making a fortune at the minute. You know, the risk with this tide is a risk of damaging the nets and the gear, but let's take that fucking chance. Yeah, if it pays off like it does nine times out of ten when we go there, it'll be the difference between a 30 grand trip and a 40 grand trip, possibly. Right, you ready for this, Trav? Yeah, I'm on. It's going to be harder work, mate. You're going to be gut, 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 wash, 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 quick coffee, back out on deck, all right? Oh, that's cool, yeah. You game for it? Definitely. Nice. Right. Let's fucking do it. Sweet. See you in a bit. Yeah. One more hole, get a gear board. This big gamble is make or break. If this didn't pay off, we wasted five hours getting there, five hours of fuel, five hours of no earnings. But you can't just stay there and think the fish will come to you. That's why you're a fisherman. You know, you search for fish, you're a hunter. People who go and dig gold out of the Yukon, same sort of thing. They, uh, you know, they, they dig holes in the ground and hope to find a big pot of gold, and, yeah, we're, we're very similar. 35 miles out into the English Channel, Drew is bringing in his first haul of the trip. Hooray! High five. EU quotas restrict scallop boats like the Van Dyke to just 11 days fishing a month. So every haul counts. You always kind of sat in the wheelhouse when, when you haul up. There's always that, oh, go on, go on, be really good, be really good. I mean, ideally, we want a minimum of six to seven baskets of scallops per haul, much less than that, and you're, you're only really paying the expenses. One, two. One scallop. That was a crap first haul, in case you're wondering. Oh. <laughs> I was wondering how long it would take you to admit defeat. No, I don't, don't admit, admit defeat easily. Yeah. In the early days. When you've done a couple of days and you've not caught much, you're thinking, well, I'm behind already. Just over 10 days a month, we were actually allowed to fish. The question to anyone who asked me about it, is if you were told you could only work for 10 or 11 days a month, could you pay your mortgage? 
could you put a roof over your wife and children's head and feed them? And they all say no. You have little periods where everything seems to be going wrong and you're pulling your hair out. Oh, God, why do I do this job? <laughs> Bless your cotton socks, Chloe. That's lovely. Should we write another one for Daddy? Yeah. Yeah, can write one for Daddy. You know, my role is provider and protector. Determine. Wonderful word for Daddy. Make sure they got a roof over their head and food on the table and clothes on their back. <laughs> yeah. I've got to, uh, you know, got to keep going for them. Drew decides not to spend time and money moving to a new fishing ground. Experience tells him there will be a good haul of scallops somewhere on this patch of seabed. Midnight. It seems Drew was right to stick to his guns and stay put. When you don't As the scallops start to roll in, the whole crew ups its game, and Aaron can at last see what real fishermen do. When the equipment come up for the scallops, uh, they sort of straight away knew what to do. I sort of wondered how they knew how they knew if that needed being done, how they knew, you know, how they just sort of knew everything. Still smiling, Aaron. Ah. Still smiling. He's all right. Nice one. Drew's determination to go to sea despite his crew's misgivings has paid off. All right, you know what? Ten bags and I feel happy as anything. When you do find good fishing and you know you're earning good money, it puts a spring in your step. Really good feeling. <laughs> Is he doing that non stop now? For six days? Non stop. The Armoranda has spent five hours steaming to what Skipper Matt hopes are the more abundant fishing grounds of the Herd's Deep. Hey, fuckers, let's see what the Herd's Deep's got for us. It's a gamble he needs to win. Get in there, traps. It's not so easy now, is it? With the weather worsening, it's also a chance for Matt's trainee to prove his worth. Get themselves out, come on. I remember my first few times, I hated it, going around Berry Head, thinking I'm not going to see land for a week. It was thought of torture. You've got to tell, want to be there, that's the thing, want to be there. If you don't want to be there, you're fighting a losing battle. No, not strong enough, bigger pull up again. Go out. I'm afraid. Have you learned anything this week? No, Jim, let him do it. Swing it. Let me go up, then let it go forward. It's knackering work. It doesn't look like it, because them guys make it look easy. Yeah. You have watched 60 holes this trip. You should have seen that by now. My worst worry is messing it all up. I can't really afford to do that. I was kicked out of school at 14 years old. I ended up being homeless, living on the streets, staying at friends, having no money. So I ain't backing down. After a disappointing start to their seven-day trip, 
The Armoranda has spent valuable time and fuel moving to new fishing grounds at the Herd's Deep. Where's Tim? I didn't see him come out. All right, mate, come on. Thank you, mate. Yeah. Time to get out, mate, and shift. Do you want a brew? Yeah. Yeah? Do you want a tea? Coffee. Coffee, yeah, sugar? Three. Three sugars? Yeah. All right, mate. Sweet. All right. The boat's latest recruit has had just six hours off and is due back on shift alongside his new crewmates. I spend more time on here than I do at home, so we have a big family, mate. Uncle John, sit on Uncle John's lap and telling me everything you've been naughty about. <laughs> With Matt, you're in good hands, mate. You're in good hands on this boat. As a skipper, personally, I don't think I'm no better than any one of them on the boat. We're a team. I show them good mutual respect and get it back. And I think that's why we gel so well, you know? Doesn't happen often, but if you hear me shout and scream, it's for a fucking reason to take note. You all right, Matt? Not really, you. Trying to keep busy? No. Trying to keep busy? Yeah, a couple things, mate. <clears throat> what time does your watch start? Seven o'clock. So why the fuck are you sat in the galley with your crew mate, John, was out on deck working? I didn't realise what time it was. Yeah, but you're what? Like then you're out there, mate, or you fucking don't go out there at all. Simple as that, you're here to work, not sit in the galley talking shit with the crew. You've got enough time for talking in between halls or when you watch us off, right? <clears throat> yeah, it's not on, mate. You come on the boat, you've got to start from the bottom, work up, Trav. We, we've got the best crew, we are a decent crew, fucking, you've got to fit in, mate, and you've got to be the best, all right? All right. Sort it out a little bit. You've got half a trip still to fucking prove you can. All right, well, up again. Yeah, all right, nice one. I hope it done. I'm 21 years old. I ain't going to be getting any younger now. I need to start buckling down and do something right, otherwise I'm going to end up being a, a nobody when I'm older. You're there to do your work, you know, you don't just sign on like, oh yeah, it's like a holiday. You go there to work, not to fanny around. I need to pull my finger out of my ass. On the Van Dyke, the relentless hunt for scallops continues. Despite the arrival of a Force 8 gale, Love it. Rougher the better. You've got to find your legs, you've got to find your balance. So far, Dickie Lerner Aaron, who trained as an actor and dancer, has only been allowed to shadow the crew during hauls. Fucking proper freshman about that, isn't it? On his next shift, he's due to get hands-on for the first time, if he can weather the storm. I've never been anything to do with fishing. I've, the only boat I've been on is a ferry. <laughs> I wasn't right on the ferry. A few of my mates that have came have been decky learners, and they are, oh, it's not, it can't be that bad. And then as soon as they come out, they're like, oh, it is bad. When you're ill, you can't get off the boat if you want to. <coughs> I, I can understand why people say it's a bit like help. It's a tough job. You don't actually have to be that strong physically, but the mental strength is what counts. It's 2 a.m. Time for a shift change on the Van Dyke. 
it's also time for an increasingly seasick Aaron to show what he's made of. You've seen what's been going on now. If you follow the routine, step by step, you should be OK. They're quite heavy, big metal things, which means they'll have to hook each side up in the middle. And I sort of thought I knew what I was doing. But I think I sort of did it wrong. It kind of baffled him. Even though he's followed us half a dozen times, maybe a dozen times, he's uh, gone to do it and he's gone out on deck and his mind's just gone completely blank. He dropped all confidence and confused himself, really. Oh, I think he needed a good shout in it. Kick up the arse, really. Yeah. <laughs> He's been summoned. Hi, Drew. Oh, Alright, I don't know if I could just um, miss one of the halls because I'm feeling like quite shit and. Come in. Come in, stop the door. <laughs> You're feeling a bit shit? Seasicky? Yeah, like quite bad. Quite bad. Yeah. But he's still smiling, so he can't be that bad. Yeah. Do you know what, it must be such a shit feeling there, like, coming out of you and thinking to yourself, ah, it'll be all right, it'll be OK. And then, like, <laughs> I can't even pull a sickie. <laughs> well, next one's your last all anyway, so... Is it? Yeah. It's a Marmite job. Either, either you love it... Yeah, yeah. Or you, ..or you hate it. Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing at the moment you're not thinking of a career in fishing. Not at the moment, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. All right, thanks. Enjoy your tea, if you're having any. Yeah. Doing the bare minimum isn't an option if you want to get ahead of the knife. You know, if you try, fair enough. If you just give up at the first hurdle, then... Nah. <coughs> you know, you've got to have tough skin to be a fisherman. It's not as if you can phone up in the morning and say, oh, I can't come in to work today. I'm ill. You know, once you're out there, broken bone or feeling sick or you know, you're on deck, you know, that's the way it works. What the fuck's he doing, man? You all right? You sick? Yeah. I had to go lay down, mate. Hey, right, all right. He's a bit down. Huh? Is it way down? Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we've had decky learners in the past that suffered from seasickness and stuff, but at the end of the day, you've got to crack on it, shut yourself in the deep end. <laughs> Can't believe we just got up and toned it. Oh, well. No one bites the dust. Twenty-five miles away on the Armoranda, the storm is at its height, but Travis is still on deck. Yeah! He's helping to bring in one of their last holes of the trip. Personally, I'm thinking, here we go. Let's see this boy face a bit of weather. Let's see if he thinks it's fucking easy. Oh, yes! <laughs> He's got a lot of fun as well. Alright. He's a fucking drowned rat. <laughs> what 
pale white face smiling back at me. He just grinned for it all. He took it like a man, got on with his work, soaking wet, and done his haul. That's it. How's it looking, John? Trav, any monks in there? Yeah, yeah, there's loads. Loads? Fucking hope so, after steaming all this weight. Fucking hell, look at all them. <laughs> We're in the money! Do you love it when a plan comes together? Matt's gamble to steam five hours to new fishing grounds has paid off. Boxes full of valuable monkfish and Dover sole are worth up to £500, so they've easily covered the extra fuel costs and are guaranteed big profits. <laughs> Back on the Van Dyke, the fishing is also good. <laughs> and in the next few holes, Drew will have broken even. Probably the happiest time is when you get to a point and say, right, that's the expenses paid. This is all wages from now on. That's probably the easiest time when you skip it. Right, catch some scallops. Close up. Fuck it! Whoa! Fuck's sake! Fucking hell! Fuck, fuck, fuck! The cable pulling up the scallop dredges has snapped. One! Oh, God! That was close to your head as well, that. And ten thousand pounds worth of Drew's fishing gear now lies at the bottom of the ocean. Motherfucker! Losing a set of gear is probably about the worst thing that could happen. We can't fish with just one set of gear. There's a lot of times I think to myself, I told you so. Unfortunately, it's due to the lack of money that's been put into her. Drew's only hope of finding his fishing gear is to steam five hours back to port to pick up salvage equipment and return to the spot where he thinks he lost it. Oh, for fuck's sake. The last six months, trying to keep on top of things, trying to keep money coming in. I've been working very hard, but... Well, this... Could well be it. This could, you know, well be the end of us. Bankruptcy. Lose the house. It's really hard to try and keep your head above water, to try and keep positive, to try and feel like feel like there is hope and to find hope how hard it is at the moment trying to keep her going to try and keep her fishing um and the pressures and the stresses you just i just want to be there to support him i'd love to be able to be there in person and support him just reassurance that everything's going to be okay I wish we came out here and fucking smashed it and had a really good yeah. trip, do you know what I mean? It would have been good for all of us. Uh, but, like, it's not our fault in his circumstances, you know what I mean? You can tell if a skipper's stressing, but you don't really, like, talk about it.
he's emotional, isn't it? Is it? Is it in his face? Yeah, he's fucking drained, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I do sympathise for him, mate, like, but it's, that's one thing about fishing, like, sympathy doesn't pay the bills, does it? Do you know what the worst thing about it is? We've got to go home, go and get a fucking hook thing and come try and catch the fucking thing again. The Van Dyke is heading back to port after her scallop gear snapped and sank to the bottom of the sea. To be honest, fish is shit anyway, isn't it? So I say, not being at sea, but I hate fishing. Friday the 13th. Oh, fuck, is it? Yeah. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. This morning when I got up. Friday the 13th. We're, fish we're fishing in box 13. <laughs> <laughs> we're going home, Aaron. We're going home. For Aaron, reaching land can't come soon enough. Who's alive? Yeah. <clears throat> You're feeling well again now, then? Well, yeah. yeah. I'm going to say this, this was an experience. Oh, good or bad? It was good, even at home. Like, I get car sick. Yeah. That's the thing. I, I thought I could get like past it. I always have to have the window open in the car. So you, I was get, like, you get car yeah, sick and you come on a fishing yeah, boat? Yeah, that's what I mean. Really? Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's priceless. That's yeah. priceless. But I think, like, with the shifts and stuff, because I've never done that sort of shift yeah. pattern, it messed my clock up. How old are you? 24? 24, yeah. You should be absolutely full of beans. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'll do 20-hour days now. Yeah. Quite happily. And I'm nearly twice your age. Yeah. So, uh, what's next for you? No idea. Hey? <laughs> no, I have no idea. That's what's scary know. about it. Home sweet home, Lily. After eight days at sea, the Armoranda is back in port. All right, sorted. We crack on with landing. Is that ready? She's laden with a bumper haul. 350 boxes full of valuable cuttlefish, monkfish, and dover sole. Travis, can I have a word with you a minute? Yeah, of course. Decky learner Travis has survived his first trip at sea. Ages. Right, Trav. <clears throat> Guarantee at the end of the Start of the week, I told you 2.50 minimum, as long as you stick to your hours. You stuck to your hours, done your work, chucked an extra 100 quid in there, mate. Sure for that. Right, little bonus. Do you want to go next week? Definitely. Handle it? Yeah. Sure? Yep. Bad weather? Yeah, man. Go for it. Uh, I won't let you down. Sorted. Thank you. All right, you get finished, get washed up and let's get home. All right. Okay, mate, nice one. It was brilliant. I have a lot of respect for them guys on that boat. If they asked me to do anything on that boat, I'd do it without hesitation. I think it's going to become a part of me now. I, I want to do the job as a career, and I'm going to work for it. So you're going to put a stern rope up now. You stick some fenders out as well. After just two days at sea, Aaron's fishing career is over. It's an intense job, and I have so much respect for him for doing it. It just hasn't been for me. Yeah. So I'm hoping I find what I'm looking for soon. But um, more on land. I think one day I'd like that perseverance that Andy has. I had so much respect for him. He wouldn't admit defeat. Drew is now heading 35 miles out to sea with a big grappling hook. Against the odds, he's going to try and find his fishing equipment that's lost somewhere in the middle of the English Channel. 
He's a grafter. He'll do what it takes. And he is determined. Stubborn, but determined. Just to make it another day, to keep things going another day. You either laugh or cry, or you man up and get on with it. Do you know the word give up? No. <laughs> It's 9.30 p.m. and Drew has reached the spot where he thinks he lost the fishing gear. You know, put, in, put into layman's terms, got to go and tow a big hook around the seabed and hope we catch the gear. That's pretty much what you're doing. Well Thank you. It's a very small target, 240 feet below the uh, sea level, even with modern GPS. And I've known boats go and creep for gear for 6, 12, 18 hours and still not find it. Uh, people have even given up looking for gear when, they, when they've not been able to find it. If there's any kind of discrepancy in the position where you think it is, you can be going up and down on the same bit thinking, well, it's definitely here and it's not, it's a quarter of a mile to the west or the east. With Drew, he's uh, very clued up at what he does. There's determination, patience. He's not one to give up very quickly. After an hour and a half of searching, something has snagged on the hook. The side where the creek digs in and the boat takes on a list and it leans over to one side and you know you've caught something and but you obviously you're hoping it's what you want to catch and not something you don't want to catch. Come on, be there. give up. Fucking happy days. You put the effort in. You work hard, you'll get your reward. Happy days are here again. The sky above is clear again. tough job, it really is. You've just got to be determined to you know, try and keep going. Hello. Hello, Hello monkey. Oh. It is true that it is hard at the moment. But we're fighting through. We're pos naturally positive people. Oh. Things are beginning to change. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Enough to give hope. You get bigger every time we come out. We have enough money this week. We can start paying back some of the bills, some of the money we owe. We've still got a few quid in wages. <laughs> <laughs> Thank fuck for that. <laughs>
the fuck does he think he is? Next time, the Kavanik goes head to head with foreign trawlers. We're gonna get fucking hammered again here in a minute by the same boat. Yes, it's start a fucking war. And Phil's crew are pushed to their limits. We're going to Saturday morning. Oh, you kidding me? No. Oh, I hate my fucking job. I hate my fucking boss. There's only one god above the earth, and there's only one skipper aboard the boat. Needed lessons in fucking seamanship. Fucking asshole. That's next Monday at the same time. Now, the wait is finally over this week on 4. Don't use your credit cards, keep your phone off, stay off the radar to avoid being hunted. That's Thursday at 9. And this Sunday at 9, it's the hassy end of the franchise, the series that'll get rave reviews. This is England 90. Having a culture crisis next tonight, though, it was all right in the 1970s.